love to think that this uh, planet is undergoing a, a spiritual evolution, but I don't see any signs of it. We're still trying to colonize one another's minds. You know, we're, we're, still, we're, we're still trying to sort of like tell people what to think. How many people live in a world where their word no longer matters because they don't have money? Is America willing to do what it has to do to actually um, cultivate more equitable sharing of resources in the world? En el mundo occidental o oficial, industrializado, tienen una idea de que la madre naturaleza es para explotarla. Up destroying all of our resources and also the living communities. Well, we're faced with a challenge. Can we, as a global tribe, get our act together fast enough to be able to change our behavior, our collective behavior fast enough. Even when the Buddha and Jesus and Mohammed came, they couldn't change people's minds. It is a big challenge because it is very protective to remain in the narrative. It is very safe not to challenge that cover around you. I think we just have to not fix it. We just have to sit with it. We just have to sit with the truth of it. We have to let go of the story of America as savior. How can I be, or how do I have to be in order for you to be free? The, the challenge is when we talk about standing on a groundless ground of nothing in that future and knowing that the future is void and empty. The challenge becomes what can we do that honors and respects every single individual that lives on this land in their history, in their identity, in their own narratives, and at the same time with this respect of their narratives and their identity, create a future that they will look at. And they would say, I don't just easily fit into this. I want to be part of this. And my own personal identity and my own belief system will be even enhanced to a greater extent by me buying into this new story and this new narrative.
human beings have within them the capacity both to make peace and to make war. And what is really ideal is for us to look for that and find in each one of us that which makes us human, that makes us want to live and want to enjoy freedoms. And if we work with that, it actually is possible to find a solution to the conflicts. A lot of the time, the conflicts that rage and continue in the world, whether it's conflicts around resources, conflicts between men and women, conflicts uh, among religions, those conflicts are fueled by the negative in us, which is encouraged where we um, demonize one another, where we do not uh, see ourselves being able to share and, and have a common understanding. which means that they have to give up their comforts they're not willing to do. The majority of the people, there are always going to be people on the outsides who are willing to do something, but the real people who really matter, they're not interested. And you look even in Asia now, more and more people, the middle class is coming up, but it just means that they're buying more, consuming more, and using up more and more of the Earth's resources. And they're not going to be told, no, no, you should be content with little and stop using your cars and stop using, you know, your refrigerators and so forth. Who is going to listen to that? They're going to say, well, let America do it first. They're the ones to tell us. What about them? We want all these things that you've always had. Don't you tell us to give it up. And now we're talking about billions of people thinking like that, you know, in Asia, in China, in, in India. Everybody is dreaming of having a car and a television and a refrigerator and, and on and on and on and on. They're not thinking about, you know, going back to what they, they had before, which was very little and contentment. And in all the media, I mean, everywhere, advertisements, 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 movies, showing people, even ordinary so-called people, living like gods. And then everybody thinks, that's what I want. Not so easy, is it? I mean, politicians can talk, but... At the end of the day, the population is rising and rising and rising, and to my mind, this is the greatest threat to the world. So many people, how's the world going to support so many people? So maybe the, the answer for them is, all oh, right, we blow up half the world, and then, you know, we've got room for the rest of us. We have systems and structures that condone aggression and violence as long as it's sanctioned by the state and by the government. We have systems and structures that create and engender further and further and deeper and deeper separation and give it some kind of a platform for being reasonable rather than engendering and supporting deeper and deeper mutuality and oneness. And so until those systems and structures are also undermined and pulled apart, then we will only see change, like small shifts of change, but not transformation. Until the systems and structures themselves are no longer able to support those social sensibilities that are damaging to humanity, we, we will not be transformed as a society. Um, and those systems and structures were created and are kept in place by individuals. So it, it's a cycle, a circle that kind of loops back on itself. We have a right to produce. Everyone should be given the right to produce. We should not be consistently limited by an economic system that have made slavery worse.
in the 21st century than it was in the 17th century. Because people expect to participate and count. People expect to experience a world of oneness and count. Because every system tells them they're free. And when it's not true, Search for justice is one of those fundamental values that I think should guide all of us because if you believe that you want fairness, you want equality, you want freedom, you want to live a life that is safe, that is not subjected to violence, it is that belief which I think will drive you to want to go and be involved in making sure that the other person also enjoys that same feeling of justice, feeling of, of, of freedom. To build a future that again respects that identity, respects me, as being a Palestinian, respects me as being an Arab, respects a person who's being a Jew, respects a person who's being a Buddhist, but create a future that has a sense of independency from that ethnic uh, past. And that's where the challenge uh, becomes in creating this new global identity. It is an identity that encompasses everyone and has no value in it of being against uh, anything else or anyone else. A certain type of development is happening on the planet, in nature as well as in human beings that we cannot exploit it anymore. We reach a point in which it has to be mutual consent if we're going to get the participation of nature and other human beings into world systems. We can't force people to do anything anymore. We've reached a point where that type of exploitation of the human capacities are over. People wouldn't tolerate it. This is part of the world of terrorism. This is what it has produced. People saying we would not allow ourselves to be exploited. Now there's a certain edge. What fundamentalism is producing. Now when we when we we, we, we do not want to share a world, the only thing left is fundamentalism. No se trata de uniformizar, no se trata de hacer, por ejemplo, del mundo un solo tipo de cultura. Eso significa terminar muchas culturas, muchas formas, muchas formas de, de, de manifestación y de relación a, ante la naturaleza. Lo que buscamos las diferentes culturas es que sin perder la diversidad podamos contribuirnos, podamos ayudarnos unos a otros con nuestra forma de ser, con nuestra particularidad, con nuestra diversidad, para que sea una sociedad que respete la diversidad y vivamos en un mundo de, de mucha riqueza eh, cultural, eh, de formas diferentes de relación con la naturaleza, unas formas diferentes de relación con, con el gran espíritu de la vida. Eso es la riqueza que no queremos terminar. Es peligroso buscar la unidad en donde se termine la diversidad. I think the the power of what what we are talking about is the ability and the desire to create transformation. 
And transformation has to take place from one setting into another setting. And that setting is that core identity that people are born in. And this is the reality. I mean, I, I was born as a Palestinian. I have an identity card that says I'm a Palestinian. I cannot uh, even, if I personally cl claim to be a human being, part of the human family, the first checkpoint or airport or border crossing immediately throws me back into this one identity which the world now has placed upon me and recognized me. That the challenge is to be able to distinguish your identity and what makes your identity from the interpretations that have caused you to create animosity and conflict and tension with other identities as well. I think the world will be a very boring, dull world if we all are just one identity claiming to be one people living in this world. I think there is creativity, there is art, there is culture, there is talents, there is philosophy that is presented by combining all of these different identities, recognizing them, respecting them, engaging in a discussion of equality amongst identities, not that there is one ethnic identity better than the other, one religion better than the other, one uh, society better than the other, that we are all equal. And equality at the premise, as I said, is what will create an opportunity for this new global identity uh, to be developed. As we speak, cars in Boston and factories in Beijing are melting the ice caps in the Arctic, shrinking coastlines in the Atlantic, and bringing drought to farms from Kansas to Kenya. The poppies in Afghanistan come to Berlin in the form of heroin. The poverty and violence in Somalia breeds the terror of tomorrow. The genocide in Darfur shames the conscience of us all in this new world. Such dangerous currents have swept along faster than our efforts to contain them. And that is why we cannot afford to be divided. This is our moment. This is our time to open doors of opportunity for our kids, to restore prosperity and promote the cause of peace, dream and reaffirm that fundamental truth that out of many we are one, that while we breathe we hope, and where we are met with cynicism and doubt and those who tell us that we can't, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. Thank you. God bless you. I don't know what the answer is. If I knew, I, I would be a multimillionaire selling it, you know? Would you? <laughs> well, you could build lots of nunneries and monasteries with millions. Um, I mean, if one knew the answer, wouldn't that be wonderful? There are many people who talk about it, many people who dream of it, many people who, uh, millions of people who want to see it happen. It's a dream for many people. Por ahora, lo vemos como algo utópico. Muchas cosas que ahora vemos como, eh, como ya cotidiano, antes era utópico, ahora es cotidiano. We can split the atom, we did. We can go to the moon, we did. This is the imagination. What we can even do more with the power of love.
que paremos un momento y miremos más ampliamente nuestra vida y vamos a darnos cuenta de que hay muchas cosas más importantes que pasar todo el fin de semana en los supermercados tratando de comprar todo lo que puede para tener una, una satisfacción momentánea. Within your own experience, there's a bigger experience where it is possible for you to get beyond your immediate experience and seek out that that is human, that unites us uh, as, as human beings. What if? this reality can change. What would it look like? If it's possible for um, a bunch of little white people from England to become the greatest imperial nation of the world for a millisecond of human history, you know, that's an amazing feat, what they pulled off. I mean, it's just as possible that humanity can sort of think, hey, um, why don't we walk left instead of right? <laughs>